we're going to look at two scenarios where we want to base a pivot table on multiple sheets. The first one is where you have sheets for, say, each branch or each product. But on each sheet, you have the same column headings. They're in the same order. The column headings are spelled exactly the same, but therefore, in our example, different branches. The second scenario is completely different. What we have is sheets with related data, but you have different column headings. For example, in the sales sheet, I have a branch column which relates to the region sheet. Each branch is within a region. I want to combine this region information with this sales information in my pivot table. It's the same with products. Products is related to the product categories table. That brings across the product category for each of these products. Different column headings, different number of columns, we want to base our pivot table on those multiple sheets. Let's start off with looking at the solution for this scenario. The first thing to do is to house all of your data in tables. That's easy to do. I'll start off in the sales table. I'll click in any cell and go to insert table. This just confirms the range of cells that you want to house in your table and also ask whether you already have headers. We do, so I'll just click on OK. Then you want to give the table a name. So I'll just call this sales. So we've got to do this for each sheet. There is a shortcut key to house data in a table. Again, you just click in a cell, control T, click on OK, and I'll call this categories. And then lastly, we'll do the same for regions. Then you just need to go to one of your tables, doesn't matter which one, go up to insert, pivot table, and you must tick this box here, add this data to the data model, and we're gonna place our pivot report on a new sheet. Click on okay. And then what you want to do over here on the pivot table fields tool, is click on all, and you'll see here it's recognized all the tables in your workbook. Let's build a little pivot table report. What I want is regions in rows. I want categories in columns. And I want revenue in values. Now the report we get at the moment isn't very good. It seems to have returned the same revenue for each combination of region and product category. And that's because we need to set up relationships between these tables. Now if you're lucky, you're better use the auto detect feature within Excel to do this. It says up here relationships between tables may be needed. So I click on auto detect, click on close. You can see I now have my report. I need to do a little bit of formatting. So I right click on one of those cells, number format, currency, no decimal places. Now, the reason it was able to establish those relationships is because we have some common field headings here. So I have branch in the sales table, but I also have branch in the regions table. I have product in the sales table, and I also have product in the product categories table. I won't always recognize those relationships. Let's look at how we can manually establish the relationships. I'll just get rid of the existing relationships within our data model. You can see now we're back to the scenario we first faced where we seem to have the same aggregate result for each combination of product category and region. How do we establish the relationships manually if they cannot be auto-detected? Well, up on the Pivot Table Analyze tab, you'll find a Relationships button if you click on that. Then click on New. And we're going to start with our Sales table. And the foreign key, so that's the field that is going to be used to create a relationship with either the product categories table or the regions table. We'll set up a relationship between the sales table and the regions table, first of all. Our foreign key will be branch. That's the field that is common to both the sales table and the regions table. Our related table is regions and is automatically selected branch there for me. Click on OK. That's made a bit of a difference to our report. But we're not quite there, so we have to create another relationship. Again, we're going for the sales table. And this time we're trying to create a relationship with the product categories table. Foreign key is product. Then 
choose our categories table and the primary key will be product. Click on OK, click on close and we have our report. OK, let's look at the second scenario. Don't forget here, we've got the same column headings in each of our sheets. And this is a scenario where you have a different sheet showing exactly the same kind of data, but for different branches or for different products. How do I base a pivot table on all of these sheets? First step is to house all this data in tables. And the way to do that is to click in any cell and go up to insert table. This little dialog box just confirms the range of cells that you're housing within your table and also whether or not you currently have headings. If you do have headings, just make sure that's ticked. Click on OK. Then you want to give the table a name. We'll just call this one Brighton. And then if I go to Carlisle, a shortcut key for housing data in, within a table is again to click in a cell and then Control T on your keyboard. And this one will be called Carlisle. I'll go ahead and do it for the other three tables. Now we do have another sheet here called branch list, which doesn't have the same column headings. It's just a list of branches. I've included this list just to show you how you can exclude certain sheets from your pivot table report. We'll place this in the table as well. And I'll call this branch list. Notice I have to put an underscore between the two words because you cannot have a space in a table name. Okay, so it doesn't matter which sheet you're on when you start this process, but what you're going to do is go up to data and then go over to get data from other sources, blank query. Now in this area up here, which is like the formula bar in Excel, I'm going to type the following formula equals Excel.currentWorkbook. And then you need an open and close bracket at the end. And then just press enter. And that will list all of the tables in your workbook. We don't want to include the branch list table in our pivot report. So up here, I'm going to filter that table out. Click on OK. Then what you do up here in the first column is click on this little expand button and then just click on OK. This list combines the data in all of the tables within your workbook. Just one little change we can make here. We don't need this name column. If I right click on name, remove, then I'll go up to close and load, close and load two, and I want to create a pivot table report. Click on OK. You can see our column names here, and they're all prefixed with the word content. So we've got to go back into Power Query to get rid of that prefix. If I go back to Queries and Connections, I'll double click on this query that I created. Down the side here, we have the steps that we've created for our query. And I want to go back a few steps. I'm going to get rid of the steps that I'm going to replace. That's the last two steps. Filtered rows I want to keep. That's where we filtered out the branch list table. But now I'm going to go up to expand and untick this option. Use original column name as prefix. Click on OK. Then I'm going to delete this name column. And we could give the query a better name. Let's call this all branches. And then I'm going to close and load. If I go back to my pivot table view, you can see now it's got rid of that prefix on all of these field names. I'm going to tick branch. And you can see I get all the branch names. I'm going to tick revenue. I can apply some formatting to the revenue. I could break it down by customer type and by product group. Now the other thing we might want to look at with both of these methods is what happens if we update the individual sheets. Does our pivot table pick up the changes? Well, I'm going to go to the Brighton sheet and I'm going to add a new record here. But I'm going to put in a product group that currently doesn't exist, garden furniture. that was bought in the store, 500 pounds. 
If I go back to my pivot table, there's no evidence that we have any purchases relating to garden furniture. But if I refresh my pivot table, it will pick up that new purchase. What happens there if I add a new sheet? So we have a different branch. So I'll add a new sheet. Let's call this Winchester. And I'll paste in the data for Winchester. And I'll call this table Winchester. Now, if I go back to my pivot table and refresh, if I look down here, you can see that Winchester is now included within my report. And that's because our pivot table is based on Power Query, which is looking at all the sheets within our workbook, except for the branch list sheet. Now let's go back to this other method where we had three different sheets, different number of columns, the different column headings, but related data. If I add a new branch here, let's say Colchester, and we'll create a new region called South East. Now my sales table, let's go to the bottom. I'm gonna create a new record. Branch is Colchester. I'm gonna select a product, a quantity, and that automatically gives me a total there. Let's go back to our pivot table and refresh. That also brings up the new data, the new region in our case, with the associated transaction value. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please subscribe and give me a like, and I'll see you next video.